Just win, baby. Just win. All right, I'm back with another one. All right. <clears throat> Winning Time, HBO original series, The Rise of the Los Angeles Lakers Dynasty. All right. First off, man, this is the finale. First off, man, I've been playing catch up the past few days. And um, I, I watched this, this show like the last three days. I started watching from episode one to ten and i'm gonna just tell you man hbo did a good job hbo did a good job okay i want to make that clear you know there's a lot of controversy going on with this uh show you know as far as people like magic johnson and jerry west and all of them are complaining and saying that the story <clears throat> The story isn't accurate and all that kind of stuff, but this this story this show is based off a book, and the guy that wrote the book, he spoke with who he could, you know, Magic Johnson and everybody, all the the big the big time people in the in this story, Magic Johnson, Jerry West, those guys, they they turned them down, so he had to speak to the people that was on the bench, the nobodies, you know, the people who worked in the front office and that, that was around, you know, all, all these uh, big time people. So he spoke to who he could. And um, I think I think for the most part is accurate. I think it's 50 50 probably half of his accurate half of his not. But, you know, I'm sure that this was filmed in Los Angeles. <laughs> And I think the main writer of the show, he's from Los Angeles. I mean, I'm pretty sure they could have given, they probably tried to give a chance, give Magic and the, and, er, and everybody a chance to uh, give their opinion or input. But who knows? I mean, I don't know. You know, who knows? Maybe they couldn't come to an agreement of what, you know, of who could have, it, you know, with Magic and, some of the other big time people that you know how they go big time ego people like magic and jerry west they're gonna want to control everything that's put in the show and i'm sure hbo not gonna give in to that why why they not gonna give in to that because their job as a television network is to make a entertaining show and that's what they did you cannot be accurate 100 percent accurate when you're doing a drama series like this this isn't a documentary this is a television show save the accuracy for the documentary this is a television show so they have to make it more interesting okay they have to make it more interesting you know there were some things like norm nixon he did an interview he said uh that 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 one-on-one that -on -one between him and Ma magic johnson never happened and he said it didn't make sense because it, it was the summertime he wouldn't wear a fur coat in the summertime so you know you know it, but it was a great scene i'm glad they put it in there it was a great scene and they did a good job they did a good job man the title of the finale episode was The Promised Land, okay? And we know why it's called that. If everybody know the story, okay? The Lakers face their greatest challenge yet. Bus, Kareem, and Haywood each grapple with demons. Irvin works his magic against Dr. J. So, yeah, we know. We know about the um the story the lakers magic's rookie season a king uh kareem got hurt in game and uh what well, game five and game six magic came back and played center and what he won finals mvp and he won the series and we know all about that and that's what the episode pretty much did it's great for people who don't follow sports like that and um i do have concrete evidence i did an experiment i contacted this uh, uh a test subject and i told her who knows nothing about the lakers 
and sports. And I told her to watch the show. And guess what? She wants to com- continue to watch the show. She enjoyed the first episode and she's going to continue to watch it. And I just wanted to do that. To, I think that's a testament of how HBO just did such a good job at the series. You know, they just did a real good job at, um, you know, they just did a real good job with the series. You know, that's what I think. Uh, HBO just, you know, it just showed they did they did their job. They told a good story, you know, <clears throat> and I and I just can't say that enough. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> so we know about that story. We know what happened in the episode. I mean, you know. You, you don't have to. Uh, I just want to talk about some key things that that stuck out to me. And uh, first of all, I want to go through these characters because uh, the cast did a good job, starting with John C. Riley, man, Jerry Bus. There was another guy that they had picked to play Jerry Bus. It was a guy. If anybody, I don't know his name, but he. If you Google him, you can find out. But it's the guy I know him from Boardwalk Empire. But he was in other stuff. But I know him for Boardwalk Empire. Okay. So, but they, for some reason, they, 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 did, they didn't cast him and they casted John C. Riley. And I think that was a good move. He did an excellent job with Jerry Buss. And I think it was accurate. Interesting fact to me, though, it's interesting how Jerry Buss is in the very first scene we see him in episode one. He's waking up in the Playboy Mansion with Hugh Hefner, and and he was such a big time womanizer. And when it comes to Jerry Buss, the way that that he's portrayed, you know, he's a um. He respects his mother. He respects his daughter. He respects his ex-wife. And but he's a big time womanizer. And, you know, he's a, just a good, great, um, hardworking boy from Wyoming with a single mother. And it's funny how he's portrayed like that. But then you take Bill Cosby hanging out at the board at the Playboy Mansion and, and he's doing all this stuff and he's a pariah. He's a this. He's a that. And it's interesting. So Jerry West is not a uh, a womanizer, uh, an abuser of women. He's not a, you know, he he's he's not accused of this. He's not me too as well. I mean, I don't know. This is interesting how the media works these things. Jerry Buss is a clean cut, clean guy. You know, it's obvious to me that like me, he he doing the same stuff that that other. That other people like Bill Cosby b- about to lose their legacy over, but Jerry Buss didn't lose his legacy, did he? I noticed that. That's something I noticed that was interesting to me. But anyway, great job with John C. Riley. Then you got Quint. Then you got uh Quint C. Isaiah. And this guy come out of nowhere. I don't know where they found him at. It looked like they found they went to a pickup game at the center, at the rec center, and they just asked him, uh, who who tall, who want to come work in uh and I mean, but let me tell you, he did a great job. Quincy Isaiah did a great job. He looked like magic. He smiled, got that magic smile, he got magic mannerism, he doing it all. He did a very good job. Jason Clark played Jerry West. One of my favorite characters on the show is the guy that is the Jerry West character. And what they took with th- this is a show. And Jerry West is mad. The real Jerry West is pissed off. He's mad. But they took a show and they made the show entertaining and they chose to make Jerry West a comedy act. And it's and it's good. And and, and they did a good job. It was well done. And, and let me tell you, I think Jerry West was kind of close to that in real life. I think he was a, a a-hole. I think he was a, a jerk to every a jerk to everybody i believe that about jerry west i really do because we see jerry west now and people like me we only know him from you know like the 90s and on on up when he became such a nice guy when he recruited Shaq and he became everybody's buddy and he's the elder statesman now right that's how we know jerry west is the elder statesman you know that's how we know him now and I believe that they're accurate. He was an a hole. He was hard to get. He was hard to deal with. I believe that. But they turned him into a comedy act, and I think it was a good job. 
And we have uh, Gabby Hoffman, who played the, you know, she's a real life character. She played the uh, lady who, you know, pretty much looked over the finances and everything at the farm. She did a great job. That actress did a great job. She, she was a great real life character, you know. And then we got Hadley Robertson, Jeannie Buss. She did a good job. She played Jeannie Buss. How, that's how I believe Jeannie Buss was back in during that time. Kind of shy and, and soft-spoken. Did a good job. Devon Nixon, who is Norm Nixon's son. I didn't know that. I, only, I knew him from Snowfall. He played the, the gangster who got shot this past season and is paralyzed on Snowfall. That's what he played. But... He did a good job, and, you know, as a matter of fact, he might have did too good of a job because I don't think players in the seven, in the late 70s and er, uh, in early 80s had uh, was in shape like he was. He might have been a little too much in shape, you know. He, but uh, he did a real good job. Who could? I don't think anybody else could have did a better job playing that, uh, Norm Nixon than his son. Than his, I think that's his oldest son, too. So, yeah, he did a really good job. Solomon Hughes. This Solomon Hughes guy, he really encompassed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He really did a good job encompassing him. Solomon Hughes is an interesting guy. Solomon Hughes um, played college basketball. Then he went from college and he he was in the Phoenix Suns. He got cut from the Phoenix Suns training camp, so I don't think he never really played NBA basketball. But he went on and did played in some other professional leagues, I think, down in South America and places like that. And he played with the Gold Trotters and things like that. Then he went on and got a doctor degree. This guy's a doctor. And then he went on, and then he went on. I think maybe for like ten years, he kind of played. Uh, he kind of worked on the staff of the. Uh, at Stanford. He was worked in the administration at Stanford. So this guy just comes out and I mean, he, he, they got a tall, they found exactly the right person, a tall, intelligent guy who looks like Kareem. They couldn't, that was a great casting move. Then you got Tamara Tomakil. I probably, I know I slaughtered her last name. She played that cookie, didn't she? I like that. I like her playing cookie. I like her. I like her. She did a good job. Her and um, Isaiah have really good natural chemistry together. Really good natural chemistry together. You know, you know. Don't it seem like she was playing a little hard to get too much with Magic? Like she kind of got some joy out of seeing Magic just big. You women need to stop that. A lot of women like that. They like they get something out of seeing a man big like that and keep pursuing her as like a chase, you know. And um, maybe that's why he end up. I don't know. Do, do you think? But here's the thing: if you think if she would have been with Magic the whole time, do you think Magic still would have slept with her best friend? Yep, I think he would have. <laughs> I think he would have still did all that womanizing. So you can't blame her in the, in, for, for you know, you can't blame her for, for being the way she was. And then you got uh, Brett Cunning playing Bill Sharman. He did a good job. He's been in other stuff. Why don't they do an up-to-date picture? He don't look like that now. He look old as hell now. And that's the guy playing Frank. They need to get some up-to-date pictures. Chick Hearns. Oh, man. This guy here, Spencer, he did a good job with Chick Hearns. What an asshole. Wasn't Chick Hearns an asshole? Wasn't he an asshole to Pat Riley? Okay. Then this lady right here. And there's some more characters that really caught my eye. Rob Morgan. I think he did a good job playing Magic Johnson's father. Rob Morgan did a good job playing Magic Johnson's father. Really good job. Sally Field, a veteran. You know she did. I love her and Smokey and the Bandit, ain't it? We always gonna know her for uh we gonna know her for that. Uh Sally Field did an excellent job. Veteran actress. She had good chemistry with the Jerry Buss guy. And this guy here, Pat Riley, he did a good job playing Pat Riley. 
I think if you know they try to make Pat Riley look like you know I think they get a get a good job portraying him as a loser. I think that's accurate. He was that. I didn't know that he was the guy that got dunked on back when he played for Kentucky when Kentucky got beat by the that Texas team of all black players and they dunked on Pat Riley and. uh he wasn't that good of a player during his time. I don't. I don't. And um, I think he was just known for his defense because he wasn't good in nothing else. And um, I'm gonna tell you, they want to try to say Paul Westfall and and Pat Riley were, you know, were good coaches and stuff like that. Okay, Jack McKinley, that guy, he did a good job. But it was Jack McKinley's system. It was Jack McKinley's system. That that Showtime system where they ran the floor, it was his system, and I don't think Pat Riley and and Westfall were that good. I mean, the guy that played Westfall, they don't have him up here, but that guy did a real good job. I mean, hilarious the way he would quote Shakespeare and stuff. Them players looking at him like he crazy. That was some of the funniest parts. But I'm gonna tell you about Pat Riley. They making it look like you know he was just a good coach and all this and that, but. But I like we got to see him before the slick back hair and all that, because that's all I ever known him as growing up was slick back hair and, and you know, the suave looking guy. I like seeing him a bum. We get to see Pat Ryder when he was a bum. I like seeing it. But I think Pat Ryder, and we get to see how Pat Ryder, let's see what he do next season to become the head coach. Because... I think Pat Riley really snaked his way into the assistant job. I think that's how it really happened. He was a snake. I think he probably stabbed somebody in the back to get into that job, to get that job. And let's see what he do to get the head coach job. I think he going to stab somebody back to get that. I think that's just how Riley worked. If you notice, when him and Paul Westfall were fighting and arguing, uh, and Pat Riley was the one that kept trying to convince him, we need to take this job. We need to take this job. And all this and that. And the Paul Westfall guy, he didn't want to betray, backstab his friend like that. That guy got uh, character. That guy got honor. Pat Riley didn't give a damn. Notice that? Yeah, that, now I believe that's accurate. That's how Pat Riley is. But I wish they would have made it look, show it for more for what it probably was. I think Pat Riley was doing some backstabbing. And um, backstabbing to get that position. One um, ca last character, which I don't understand why they didn't put on the top page. I guess because they didn't bring him in to what? Toward the end of the season, maybe? I mean, maybe like halfway through the season. Is Wood Harris, who played um, Spencer Haywood. He did a phenomenal job, man. Phenomenal job, man. Phenomenal job. And, you know, he's well known. Well, I know him. He's been in a lot. He's been in a lot of stuff. But the most famous role I know him for playing is uh, Avon Barsdale on The Wire. But he did a good job with that Spencer Haywood, man. He really did a good job. And, you know, like, I really liked how. I liked how Kareem kind of, well, you know, Kareem, they did a good, that guy did a good job with Kareem on um, that Jonathan guy. I mean, that Solomon guy. They did a good job with just showing Kareem, like, showing why he was so mean and grumpy all the time. He's always been known as an a-hole. To the uh, press and stuff, and that's all we know. But they showed his childhood, how the, the type of his how his parents were, and how his parents reacted when he his dad reacted when he converted to Islam, and the problem that that uh, Kareem had dealing with systemic white supremacy and things like that. And also, I liked how he was a friend to Spencer Haywood, and you could tell he really cared about Spencer Haywood. And uh, something they didn't talk about, they weren't, which they weren't able to put into the show, you know, Spencer Haywood was on that narcotic throughout the show, and he ended up getting kicked off the team. But, you know, Spencer Haywood went on to uh, get in rehab and clean himself up. But I liked how in the scene that – Woody had that Wood Harris did so well when he was talking when he was getting kicked off the team and talking to uh Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I liked how Woody um 
the how the writer they the people that wrote the guy that wrote this show really went into about how Spencer Haywood wasn't just a drug addict. He was a drug addict deal, dealing with trauma. He was a drug addict dealing with trauma that he faced growing up in Mississippi. And Wood Harris did that scene very well. Basically, he grew up in Mississippi and faced a lot of trauma dealing growing up there in Mississippi, uh, picking cotton with under the sharecropping system, picking cotton and all that kind of stuff. And the drugs was how he dealt with the trauma that he could never get over as a child in this system um, growing up in the South. OK. Under their white, under white supremacy, and I just like how well. But Wood Harris did a very good job with Spencer Haywood, and um, you know, Wood Harris, you know, he to do that scene I'm talking about in the locker room where he talks about his childhood and everything. When he was talking to um, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Wood Harris went, uh, he took about three days to prepare for that scene. He memorized it and went over and over and over. He called Spencer Haywood to get some perspective about it. And Wood Harris just did a really good job, man. But speaking of Wood Harris, I noticed, like, Wood Harris last year, he was on that, uh, was it Raising Canaan show? Yeah, he was on Ray. No, not Raising Canaan. I think he was on BMF. Yeah, I think Wood Harris was on the Yeah, Wood Harris was on the BMF show. He might have been on Raising Kane too. I don't know. But no, BMF. He was on that BMF show. And I noticed that I didn't know that this actor right here uh played um was Wood Harris's brother. So I noticed he got Wood Harris had had a major role on the BMF show on Stars, and then his brother had like a little cop. A little cop. He played like a little cop, a little side role. And I'm pretty sure Wood Harris been looking out for his brother. He probably got his brother that role. And I looked up in this show. Wood Harris is in this show. And now he got his brother a little small role in this show. He played a girl that was dating Magic Johnson. And he played that girl daddy, which he's a shyster daddy. He ain't nothing but a shyster with them sideburns and them suits. Uh Cause I don't know no daddy that is okay with a dude cheating on his daughter. That's what this guy is. This guy, he's okay with he don't care. As long as he can get he can stay in good with magic. He like, go ahead, magic, cheat on my daughter. Treat my daughter like crap. I don't care. What kind of dad is that? But yeah, that was a good that, that, that was a good little character there. And this scene right here, man, this scene right here reminds me of the show. One of my favorite shows, which is Secession. One of my favorite shows. And man, oh man, like this guy right here. The reason, you know who this scene reminds me of when I saw this scene with Jerry West and Paul Westfall? The Jerry West character and Paul Westfall. This is the scene where, um, this is like, you know, uh, Jack McKinley bust his head riding his bicycle. And that's how the episode ended. Then the following episode, this is when, you know, uh, Paul Westfall is just left the hospital. And Jerry West, uh, he, he make it to the farm. And now Paul Westfall has to, has to do a press conference that he's taking over head coach. And Jerry West is like freaking out. You know, Jerry West, he be over-exaggerating and just, he just be... He be he you know he he just be freaking out over nothing. Jerry West got bad nerves, and um he give him that sweatshirt to wear and tell him to go up on the stand. I mean go up in front of the press. But this scene right here, when they were walking up to the press conference, reminds me of Tom and Greg from Secession. That's right, Tom Jerry West would be Tom, and Paul Westfall would be Greg the Egg. And if you know, watch the session, you know what I'm talking about. They are some of the the funniest part of the session, hands down. Tom and Greg, Greg the Egg. You can see Greg now. He's doing Uber Eats commercials, and uh, he's hilarious. 
you know, but this was like one of my any scene with Jerry West is one one of the funniest. You're gonna it's gonna want to be one of the funniest scenes. You gotta watch it. You gotta catch Jerry West. Sometimes Jerry West be in the background, he say little funny stuff that 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 isn't a part of the scene, like isn't like the main part of the scene. You can miss it, but it's just it, hilarious the the way they wrote for Jerry West. One thing I forgot to mention that I want to bring up while I'm thinking about it is um Rodney Barnes okay he was the main Rodney Barnes right here he was the main writer for the show one of the main writers for the show and I think thanks to Rodney Barnes is why a lot of the conscious stuff and more and um we got we got though that's why we got those scenes like from Spencer Haywood talking about the trauma growing up as a sharecropper picking cotton okay to explain why he was a, a drug addict just because of Barton Rodney Barnes and uh Rodney Barnes used to write for he's a really good writer he wrote for a lot of shows like everybody hates Chris my wife yeah, boondocks see he wrote for boondocks and American Gods and stuff like that which him writing for American Gods I haven't had a chance to watch the show it's on my list but that would explain why Orlando Jones had a little cameo as um Elgin Baylor because Orlando Jones was a writer for American Gods as well. And I think he started, he, he played a character in American Gods. So that explains why, how he got Orlando Jones in. Plus, I think Rodney was is good friends with Wood Harris. And he wrote that, I think he kind of wrote that Spencer Haywood character for Wood Harris. But Rodney Barnes really was able to put a lot of consciousness into the show and make a lot of sense. Like this, you see it, you can see his touches that he put in the show. You can tell there's some things that Rodney probably stepped in and, and, and said, Hey man, we're going to shoot it like this because that's the way it should be wrote as far as from a black perspective. And, um, he got it right. They got it right on a lot of stuff like that. And I think it's because Rodney Barnes and he hosts, he's the host of the HBO podcast, the official podcast of the show. And he did a good job in that. But I think we get Rodney Barnes is a guy. He needs his props. He's a good writer from the shows that he wrote and that I watched. He's a good writer. And I think we got to give him his roses from what I can see. I mean, I, I have from what I've seen, he he's pretty good. You want to know something that's uh, interesting to me? I had to put this in here, man. I had to put this in here. This was interesting, man. The Phil Knight came up to Magic Johnson. Converse had a deal for Magic Johnson for like, I think, what, $80,000 or something. And then the shikes, the, uh, the girl daddy, he got it up to a hundred thousand dollars. So he ended up signing with Converse for a hundred thousand dollars. But Phil Knight came to him before he signed with Converse and Phil Knight offered him Nike stock. Okay. And magic turned it down. Cause Cause at the time Nike stock was worth 18 cents. See at the time it was all about Adidas and uh, Converse were the basketball shoes. Nike didn't have in 1980. Nike didn't have no that they weren't nowhere near who they are today. And that Nike stock in 1979 was 18 cent, and today it's 134 dollars. I and trust me, that's very accurate because I am a shareholder of Nike myself. And um. Now, technically, right now, I think it's down. The market is down. It went down to one nineteen, which is on sale, folks. You better get some. And um, today, that it was just very accurate when they that Nike that share a few weeks ago. It was probably like one hundred and thirty four dollars. That's probably how much it was. But then that, that stock today is worth five point two billion. That magic turned down. So, what is the lesson that we can learn from this? The lesson you learn from from this, boys and girls, is don't go for the check. Go for the ownership. The more you learn, the more you know. <laughs>
And that is your Cousin Corey lesson of the day. All right, so going into predictions. What's next? Well, next for season two, I think, uh, I mean, we know what's going to happen, man. Like, we know what comes next. The dynasty has started. We know that going into the next season, some kind of way Pat Rod is going to snake his way into um, becoming head coach, which I want to see that. Let's see if Jeannie Buss gets her, her um, a position that she deserves. Instead of her goofy brothers, let's see if she gets a position within the organization that she deserves. Um, that maybe that marketing position would be good, and we'll just see. You know, we know what's going to happen. We know Magic versus Bird and all that kind of stuff. We know about that. But the thing that makes this show so interesting, I'm pretty sure Cookie and Magic is going to get married, and he probably still going to be cheating on Cookie. And I think the thing that's going to make this that HBO does so well is the stuff that we don't know, the stuff behind the scenes. We don't know. I didn't know nothing about um, Jesse Buss, uh, Jerry's mother. I didn't know nothing about uh, the drug problem with uh, Haywood and how the team voted him off. I didn't know nothing about Jack McKinnon. Nobody knew about Jack McKinnon. Didn't nobody know nothing about Jack McKinnon. And I, I bet some of the the biggest Laker fans out here didn't know nothing about no Jack McKinnon. So th- it's the stuff that we don't know. That's what's going to be interesting. And I can't wait to look forward and see. And I'm going to tell you, if you watch this show, if you listen to me this far, I appreciate you. And I can't wait. And next season, I'm going to uh, be sure to go s- – episode by episode because this show was really good and i can't wait to see the good job that hbo does because we know they're gonna do a good job and the writers are good and i got faith in rotney barnes big rotney that's what i call him he's doing a good job and all i ask is if you could share this with somebody hit the like button and uh just keep supporting me because i'm a um i'm gonna keep on keeping on keep up the good fight and uh Hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, my friends. Just win, baby. Just win.